Hi, team. This is George. Welcome to week six. Can you believe it? I cannot believe we are already in week six. Well, I do appreciate all the hard work and effort that everyone has been putting into the discussions and into the paper. It, well, the project, really, it's been a paper project up to this point. And now some of you have probably already started creating the actual parts and pieces of it. And others may just be using this week and next week to create the whole uh, project. So it's going to be an interesting week to say the least. I would like to make two offers to you since we have this week and then not this coming Sunday, but the Sunday of week seven is when the actual projects do. If you get it to me by Wednesday of next week, I can give you feedback on your project. So if you want early feedback prior to the final grade, uh, get it to me by Wednesday of next week. I'll go through it, give you feedback and, and a grade, and you can either accept that grade or you can make any changes and turn it in for an updated grade. So it's completely up to you what you want to do. You don't have to get early feedback. You can just hold everything off until that final uh, Sunday of week seven. That is perfectly okay. But uh, there's generally a few folks that want some early feedback. So I'm more than willing to do that because I appreciate all the hard work, work and effort everybody's putting into it. So if you're in that position, please feel free to turn it in. The only thing that I ask is do it by Wednesday for early feedback and email me telling me that it's in there. Because if I don't get an email, I'm not going to be going in and checking to see. Um, the look where I see it is in the grade book all the time. So just let me know and I'll have your feedback to you. Um, I'll get it to you for your project three by Tuesday. So I'll be doing some today, some tomorrow. And uh, I want to get that back to you early so you can incorporate any changes that may have to happen or not. So overall, everything that I've been seeing in the discussions and everything else are very well done. So I don't, there's no red flags jumping up anywhere now if anyone is having any issues with the uh, lms or where to host things like that please get to me early hopefully this week and let's see if we can figure out some options there so let's jump in and talk about week six now because we have a few interesting uh, things here i love our discussion we're going to have two options with our discussion you only have to do one of the options but we will have two and let's go ahead and jump to that the first option oh i thought this was going to happen sorry well we'll get there so as i said we're going to have two options and remember with these options and you're going to be using this e-learning evaluation for one of your options don't think that it has to be completely filled out completely 100 percent done because if we're going to wait for everything to be 100%, then we're never going to be moving forward. So part of the deal is knowing when to move forward, and how you can move forward. The form that uh, if you choose uh, either one of the options, the form is so you can make changes and move forward. It's not so it, it's something that can hold you back from moving forward. So we're, we're talking about usability testing and usability testing is absolutely imperative. Why is it imperative? because it tells us what other people think about it. <laughs> this is the bottom line, because we can think that we have the most fantastic and wonderful and easy to use thing in the world. And then all of a sudden we get it out to people and we find out that not so much. It, it happens, it does happen. So for option one, find one or more target learners, classmates or volunteers, review the paper or digital prototype. So it depends where you are. If you have a digital prototype, that's the best thing to look at. And you're going to get feedback on what works well, what can be different, and things like that. So you want, I always think, think Amazon for experience, one-click ordering. <laughs> so I'm not saying that everything has to be one one click, but think uh, ease for the person on this end. You don't want it to be uh, clunky whatsoever. Like you go somewhere like uh, everyone has seen Toys R Us going out of business in the United States. Well, uh, it really has less to do with Amazon than it does Toys R Us, because if you ever went on Toys R Us website, it was hard to order stuff when compared to the one-click Amazon. So you want to be very simple to navigate. So just think of it from that perspective, if you would. So the first one, you're gonna get your target learners, 
and they're going to give you the feedback. And here is the form. Uh, expectations are clear, objectives are stated, all of this good stuff. Scaffolding is built into the module. Now, I'm going to ask you a question right here. Whoops. I can't do that. Okay, I can't mark. But I can still ask a question and highlight it. Module is consistent with the stated objectives. And module objectives are stated. Okay, so let's say I have... An objective. Each learner will be able to navigate whatever it might be. Do I want to write that objective in education ease or plain language? What do I want to do? From my perspective, uh, and there's no definitive this is right, this is wrong, but from my personal perspective, if you're working in industry, and you write, so let's say I wrote an objective and my audience are flight mechanics. They don't really want to hear each learner will be able to within 80%, blah, 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 blah. They want to know exactly what they're going to be able to do. They're going to be able to remove and replace an engine. So uh, what's my objective? Remove and replace an engine with no defects. So it's a, kind of a shortened version when it gets to them. Do we still have our full uh, learning objective written down? Yeah, because that helps us along. Now, I'm not saying you have to do it that way. I am saying that there is uh, kind of a disconnect between um, the two thought processes. Neither one is completely right. Neither one is completely wrong. So think about what will work best for your perspective, for your customers. If um, one of ours is for a fourth grade uh, class that we're we're building this for, do you think they want to know the full objective uh, in education ease, or do you think they want to know in plain language? I don't know. I'm not the, the SME or the expert whatsoever in that, but that's just a question to think to yourself. So make sure the objectives are stated. How they're stated, that's up to you. They can be the full objective like we have uh, in the past, or it can be an abbreviated plain language version, as I like to call it. Uh, layout is easy to use. Think Amazon. Uh, content is free of grammatical errors. One thing, and I actually uh, bought Grammarly because uh, uh, full full disclosure, I'm horrible at that. Uh, not not really horrible at it, but um, I picked Grammarly because now I can write in there and just copy and paste because what that does is that helps with all my grammatical errors as they're coming up so I can do a little more conscious flow of thought and then go back and fix everything. And if you've noticed, if you've ever gone onto a website and have seen grammatical errors, spelling errors, things like that, you automatically begin to question the validity of whatever it is. So imagine if you're trying to learn something and you see something that is misspelled, mistyped, something like that. It's going to give you a, a certain perspective about the learning because that's going to go key right into your schema, especially for those of us in higher education, because guess what happens when we're in higher education? We are hypersensitive about all this grammar stuff uh, simply because it's part of our world. And if it's real point blank, everybody else is as well. Like uh, there was a sign, my neighbor had, a, he didn't buy an alarm, but he, but he bought a, a sign, a, a burglar sign, a, a alarm sign, and um, he, he spelled, uh, and there, there is, uh, or this is protected by, or I, I forget exactly what it was, but it's hilarious, but it was misspelled. So it was in the wrong context. So everybody knew that he didn't actually have an alarm system because no way would an actual company misspell their own or, or use grammar incorrectly in their own sign. So it was kind of funny. Uh, let's jump back into here. So the second part, if you want to choose, so you can choose this one where you get your classmates or you can partner with somebody right in class and just uh, evaluate each other's. If um, you have your digital prototype, you may want to do that. Um, it's always great to just go in and actually click around and look and feel and touch uh, whatever you've actually built. But remember uh, to fill out 
the form here so as you go through it you can show progress because you want nothing's perfect the first time so we're going to share and reflect the results of the evaluation for the second part of the same discussion so we're going to go in we're going to um, share it with somebody and get an evaluation from it and then we're going to share our results because we're we're all going to have certain things that we did well and certain things that we can do better it's just a natural part of the process so when we understand what we can do better we get a product that can reach more people because that's what we want to do we want to be able to scale and affect more people we don't want to just have it set for uh, it only works for people x because you have to know how to navigate here there and do the everything else you want it to be simple yet powerful and that's why you're here and that, that's uh, a very good reason for why there are instructional designer jobs because we're able to make things simple and powerful and that's kind of one of the keys there so if anyone happens to have any questions about the assignment or when things are due or the discussions or anything else give me a text give me an email we can jump online and just uh, go through whatever's needed or we can just answer it by uh, text or email just depends on the need of the question so I am very available we have this week and next week to complete the final projects so we're going to be kind of in in that sort of mode production mode getting everything done so if you do get stuck at a point please reach out to me early so we can uh, overcome any of that and I look forward to seeing what everybody comes up with and all the feedback from the evaluation so have a fantastic week